sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. That crust on your eyes. I care they drinking and spending money. Wow. That's an <laughs> excerpt from Boardwalk Empire. Margo Bingham is here with us this morning. What? Ladies and gentlemen, is it Margo B? Margo B, Margo Bingham, whatever you like. Whatever to call I like me. to call yeah. you. I like to call you later. Damn, you fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's not bad. Not bad. Not bad. I had to, not try, not bad. That. I had to try that. Yeah. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> first of all, uh, let's just let that moment breathe. Y'all. Every, right. okay. Every, Every day, day Margo. Okay. Every day. I'm good. Okay. okay. You good? Yeah, I'm good. All right, cool. Welcome to the show, Thank Margo. You. I'm Sway, by the way. <laughs> Thank um, you. Nice to meet you. Pleasure's mine. Um, you've done a lot prior to Boardwalk Empire, but immediately I want to talk because this is like one of my favorite series. Man. You know, and Michael K. Williams is a good friend of mine. He's great, huh? Oh, my gosh. He's, he's a great guy. Yo, he's killing that role, right? Um, yeah, no pun intended. Like, right? You got a good point. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, see, she's funny. Yeah, All right, uh, along. Jeffrey Wright. <laughs> Jeffrey Wright. Oh he was just God. here. Yes, he came I know. by and, and he spoke um, of his his character is uh, it's just flooding the screen right now, right? It is. He, his character is a bit disgusting sometimes. It's um, but it, you know, it's just a testament to how amazing he is as an actor. It's just he's such an incredible guy mm-hmm. with no ego because he could have so much of one and such a big one yeah. and uh he's so grounded and humble and then he plays this disgusting man on mm-hmm. screen and, mm-hmm. and you just you hate him but you don't want him to leave the season yeah. because you you like jeffrey wright so much and he's so incredible so it's been something else to work with him he's he's uh he's an icon he is an icon and his character um uh, dr valentine narcisse am i saying mm-hmm. that correctly yeah um uh, merci um, oh, that, that was French, Heather. I heard it. Okay, I just in case you didn't know. Um, I mean, that's another language. Every day. Yeah. Yeah. Is this a, this yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just like to it. be yeah. myself. Hey, it's, um, it's all good. Okay. <laughs> uh, his character and Michael's uh, character, Chalky White, right? Yeah. They're feuding right now. Right. And they play this out so well that I wonder what it's like on the set. for Because some people are method actors, so they mm-hmm. stay in that character. Can you feel the tension or then when they just say action, that's when it turns on? Yeah, honestly, uh, a lot of the times that they have the scenes together that are really heated, I'm not even there. Uh So it's I really I really only work on my particular scenes, Mm -hmm. which is which is nice. But I miss some of the the energy in their stuff uh, that I wish I, I, I could be able to see. But I know that that when I am there, everybody is really you know they're they're doing their own thing everybody's mm-hmm. you know they they turn it on and turn it off really quickly people go take a smoke they go take a walk around the production studio mm-hmm. you know everybody does their own thing it's it's not very method there for the most part okay. so everybody's pretty pretty normal pretty normal <laughs> yeah um you, you know you know this isn't your first rodeo uh no. you know you've done broadway yes correct you've done rent yes um i know you did some things with mtv as well didn't you do MTV Made? Uh, I did. Yep. Yes. You didn't, you, I, why, I, why is that not important? I, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's like you forgot, oh, yeah, I did that too. No, it was, okay. it was really. <laughs> I worked there. Come on. It's, I know. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, no, it was, it was really cool. Because I actually, I, I was on TRL one day with my brother. <laughs> and we were, uh, <laughs> throwback. <laughs> and um, and I remember we were part of the, the seats that, uh, you know, off air, they're, they're like, okay, guys, so we're going to start this again. Yeah. And we really need you to be really energetic. And, you know, we're going to start clapping and we're going to clap. Yeah, we're clapping. Yeah, yeah, and, um, every, you know, like, it's just horrible. And it was, um, and our section was not with it so much. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, we didn't want to conform, I yeah. guess. I guess we were like, you know, screw the man. Uh-huh. And uh, we just didn't want to clap or be energetic or whatever. And uh, and she, there was the woman that was dealing with us, the PA at the time or whatever. I remember she threatened our seats. She threatened? She, she was like th- threatening our seats. She was like, if you guys don't clap, there are plenty other listeners outside. Wow. They would want your seat, Yo. and you don't even know where you are right now. Okay, uh-huh. so we're gonna clap, and we're gonna laugh. We're gonna clap. Uh-huh. We're gonna clap. So, um, so that was my first MTV experience, and then the second was I was a maid coach. So, uh, okay, I've had a couple. You know what I mean? When he said MTV, it was a bit of a history there. So, I actually I remember. I it. remember that moment because I was doing news for MTV at that time, 
um, doing TRL news, and I remember you guys were the the, the uh, crowd snobs. That's what we deemed you guys oh. because you were too, too cool to clap. That's what we were. And, and, then, and then you guys oh, okay. were, you know, you was running this uh, okay. this movement against the man, but yet right. still you were sitting in MTV on TRL. Crowd uh, snobs. You know what I'm yeah, but <laughs> I'm glad snobs. you evolved since those days. I have those. I mean, many moons ago. Yeah, right. So many moons. Yeah, yeah, but it all counts though. Yes, you know, that it's brought a full you to circle, the, isn't it? It's a full circle, and right now. <laughs> <laughs> you are shining right now, and Thank um, you. even though you play uh, this singer, um, mm-hmm. this club room singer um, on Boardwalk Empire, it is extremely obvious that you are a very talented vocalist. And from the moment I saw you in that show, I was wondering, when is her album coming? Wow, thank you so much. I, I have an album. It's called Live at the Hazlet, and it's a live, uh, a live album that I did about two years ago now, mm-hmm. two and a half years ago. And um, it was actually my fourth album, but it's the one that I consider to be like the one and only because it's the one that I'm most proud of. Mm-hmm. And uh, right now I'm back in the studio working on some new stuff, writing with new producers and writers and and taking November and December to really work on my my own music. But I gig around the city, you know, at least once a month, and I have a seven-piece band. It's very funky and vibey, and it's cool. And Michael comes out, and Jeffrey come out, and Uh it's, you know, it's nothing but boardwalk love, so everybody knows that I do my own stuff, too. And everybody's been really gracious with my work, and um, they've they've been really sensitive to to working around my show schedules, my gig schedules, and uh, shooting. So it's been... I mean, it's been like a perfect yeah, mesh. You, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. Know? I like where you are right now. Hey, I want to play. I like I wanna, where I am too. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, Margot B is here. Yeah. All right. It's a song called "Way to the World" that we're going to play right now, and then we're going to take your phone calls. It's too much. That's "Way to the World." Look for that on iTunes. I can pick that up. Yeah. And, and pick it. Support our music, man. A lot of you guys know her as daughter Maitland from uh, Boardwalk Empire. Yeah. Uh, she's the the jazz singer if you will um who's really um banging out jeffrey wright's character and um michael williams character right yeah yeah Yeah, yeah. um but you chose the side of chalky white i did you know it's something interesting about daughter's uh arc in the show in the season that the only love that she's ever known was from a man that took her family, her blood, yeah. and has been running her with an iron fist ever since she was nine. Yeah. So when she met Chalky, it was a love that she didn't have to fight for. It was a love that she didn't have to prove. And it was just, it just was there. And it was, it, it's like these two sad souls just kind of got together and they're both survivors. They're both cut from a similar cloth. And it's, um, you really feel, you, you root for the two of them. You really feel for them. Yeah, but the, the elephant in the room is that Chalky White is married with kids. He is married. With kids, yeah. man. I know. And it's such an adultery kind of thing. Yeah. And it's moralistically yeah. incorrect. And it's just not right. But you still want them to work. You do want them to work. You just, you, and the, the, the really funny part, like, is the chick that plays Lenore on the show, mm. that plays a wife. In real life, she is my best friend. Really, and oh, wow. uh, oh, okay. and it's crazy. Her name's Natalie Watchin, and she uh, she's the best gal, and and um and we we always talked about it. We always you know laughed about it. Cause she's like, "Don't take my man," you know, and <laughs> and it's just um everybody's so nice to work with and just so cool. But it's it re- I know it's it's morally not not right, but it's just uh you can't help but love the two you of them together. Help, you can't help but love it. Um, do you guys you watch? Y'all, yeah. yeah, okay. Well, I'm curious now thinking about like with the affairs and adultery. Did it change? the way that you look at situations like that now? Um, I don't think it's really changed anything. I, I think my, my standpoint is, is still pretty similar to, to how I thought before, but it does kind of pose the question of of uh, what kind of love is right. You know, that was that was also during a time that things were also arranged and families knew each other and, and there were other meanings to, to marriage other than just people getting married married for the constitution of it you know there were other objectives in the marriage you know so you don't really know why Lenore and Chalky got together in the first place you don't know if they were star-crossed lovers or if they met at a prom or in in school you know you know that he's not really schooled very well and he doesn't have quite education yeah Yeah. he doesn't he doesn't read so it's kind of you know it's true you know Chalky can't read I mean if if you caught it in like the third or fourth episode the the two tappers come in and, and Jeffrey writes a a note to him yeah. and and chalky makes him read it because he can't read so it's just you know the little tiny things that that happen that are just so well done and so well put into play but um but it, it does make you think about 
the the times in that kind of marriage during the 20s it's totally different from modern day you know yeah 70% of marriages don't even work so sure. but i come from a family that my parents are still together and they're best friends so it's it's a totally different how long have your parents been together almost 32 years oh that's beautiful wow. Oh, yeah. wow okay yeah. um that's a record would you be able to offer a bit of advice for our citizens that listen to the show because you're multi talented clearly you can Thank act you. you did broadway you can sing for someone that has more than one talent, what did you focus on first? And what would you say to people out there that's listening that's, that, that don't know where to go? Should I act first? Should I sing? Should I dance? What did you focus on first? I think it's important to find your focus, whatever speaks to you the, the most out of whatever you want to do. But I think the main focus is actually to be as well-rounded as possible. You know, one of the... It's it's funny because when I first started in this industry, one of the biggest downfalls was that I was all over the place mm. and that I didn't have a focus. But one of the biggest ups to my career right now is that I I am all over the place and I could do everything. Mm -hmm. So it's it's kind of funny that within a ten year radius, how quickly that's changed mm -hmm. and how the the perspective has changed. You yeah. know, I walked into so many labels and record execs and A and R's when I was. 14 and 15 years old and they're like oh you know find your sound find your place and now everybody's like oh I love that she can do this and she sounds like this and she could do this and that's kind of the height of my career right mm -hmm. now so it's it, it's really it's being as well rounded as you possibly can because the more that you could do the more that you could work mm -hmm. and really in our industry as long as you're working isn't that like that's what the, we're here for that's the objective <laughs> I mean um, when Diana Ross started acting man started killing it <laughs> you know, uh, you look at Usher's done Broadway. He's done movies. He's done albums. Why can't Margo Bingham do that same thing? Margo right. B is here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Oh, we got uh, David in Atlanta. Go ahead, David. David, Heather. What up, David? What's up, Sway? Heather B, Tracy B. Love the show. All right. I'm definitely a fan. Thank you. Miss Margo, beautiful. I love that you got a main role now in the show. I've, I've been watching the show since it first came out. Thank Nookie you. Nookie was my favorite, but now I'm... Um, Taki White and uh, you have become my favorite. Um, hey, thank you. I was wondering, how do you prepare to bring so much realism to the show? I, I really like, I really love your role. I really tried to be surrounded with the 20s as much as I could. I walked around the streets in my neighborhood listening to Bessie Smith and Ethel Waters and Josephine Baker and just kind of put it on that channel and... Uh, started dressing a bit differently every time I came into work, whether it was just for a fitting or rehearsal or whatever it may be, and mm. um, just really started uh, to look at the world a bit differently. And it's definitely seeped into my, my regular life a bit, but uh, it really helps when you have those those dresses and the costumes and the makeup and the shoes, and, and then with that amazing cast, it's, uh, it's not that hard. <laughs> not that hard. Um <clears throat> Uh, does your voice, your talking voice normally sounds like this? you got a real sexy, raspy thing going. You know, usually it sounds a little bit raspy, but for some reason, you know, with the change of the weather, it's kind of busting me up a bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, we like it here. Wonder why we like it? Hey, thanks. I, I, maybe. I, I don't know. It might be too much to ask, but um, I listen to you sing almost every week. And yeah. one of the reasons why I wanted to have you here is I thought it'd be nice if, if our listenership, you know, which is worldwide in uh, multiple countries across uh -huh. the world, millions, um, are listening, <laughs> if maybe you could bless them with a little bit of something. Is that possible? Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, what, go acapella? Yeah. Okay, right, okay, I'm with that. Uh, I'm trying to think. Can you act like you're singing it to me? Oh, my. Oh, my. Okay, am I pushing too much? Am I pushing? All right, okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. Reach your... This is a song, it was a song that I... I was singing after Jeffrey and I had that scene when I was wiping his chest. And it was a really sick scene. <laughs> yeah, 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 um, yeah. So, you know, that's my intro. Uh, okay. I apologize for my voice ahead of time, but um, I wonder where my sweet, sweet daddy's gone. I stuck to him when he was right or wrong. Now I'm sad and blue, and I don't know what to do. Oh, daddy, sweet daddy, I don't want no one but you. Oh, listen to the way your baby pleads. Your kissing is the one thing that I need. Oh, how I weep, sigh, and moan since you left me alone. I wonder where my sweet, sweet daddy's gone. 
I'm so glad you didn't look at Sway and say that. <laughs> he would have fell in love. Nah, man. I, nah, honestly, I truly respect your talent yes. and, and what you bring to that <laughs> screen every week. And I Thank recognize you. the talent in your voice. And I would love to see, we could all go down next time you perform live. We could do a whole group trip. Yes. Oh, field trip. Support it, okay, yeah, field well, we trip. like field trip. And we do do bag lunches with carrots and hey. cold cuts. Hey, lunchables. <laughs> okay, Margot Bingham, ladies and gentlemen. If yeah. you don't know, now you know. Get to know her. Google her and pick up some of her music. I'm looking forward to your project. When you get it done, please come up here and perform for us, if that's okay. I would love that. All right? Yeah. And tell Mike I'll say what up. And Jeffrey, tell him hey, I'll say what up. I'll see them both soon. Thank you. Absolutely. It's Sway in the Morning, only on Shade 45.